friends, and welcome to part two. Have you ever needed courage to do something? God wants you to have courage and be bold for Him. Boldness is doing what is right and with and having confidence to do it, even if it's hard and even if you're afraid. God can help you to be bold for Him. You can be bold to live God's way. You can be bold by speaking up for what is right and telling other people about Jesus. And if you believe on Jesus as your Savior, God wants you to be bold with Him, uh, bold for Him. Say it with me. Be bold. So now um, let's continue our story of Saul. Like Saul, we all have sinned and said or thought or have done things that go against what God wants. But God wants you to respect and obey the people who are in charge of you, like your parents, your teachers. So if you um, whisper to a friend in class when you're supposed to be quiet, that's still sin because you're not doing what you were supposed to, you were asked to do. If you lose your temper and you say hurtful things to your parents or your siblings, that's also sin. And God has the right or the authority to tell you how to live because He's the one who created us. And in fact, He created the whole universe and everything in it. And God wants you to live the right way, His way, because He knows what's good for you. Um, and God is also holy. That means He's perfectly good and He can't be around sin. We've discussed this before where by Jesus' blood, when we accept him as our savior, we are cleansed of our sins and God is so gracious and generous enough to forgive us and we can have that close relationship with God and live eternally in heaven even after we die here on earth. So Saul's life was also changed forever because after he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, he completely changed his thinking around. And now he was no longer wanting to persecute Christians, but he wanted to tell people about Jesus. And so Saul was now called Paul and spent the rest of his life boldly telling others that Jesus is a savior. Say it with me, be bold. Paul went to many countries to boldly tell others about Jesus. Do you remember what we call people whose job is to tell about Jesus? Missionaries. Paul was now a missionary. Being a missionary for Jesus is not always easy. During the time of Paul, followers of Jesus were still being thrown into jail, mistreated, and even killed. They're being persecuted. Now it was Paul's life that could be in danger as he started out on his first missionary journey. Another missionary named Barnabas joined Paul as they traveled by land from Antioch to Seleucia. They, then um, they sailed on a boat to a large island named Cyprus. By the end of this trip, they had gone all the way to Galatia. While they were in Cyprus, they preached the word of God to the people as they traveled throughout this island. Paul and Barnabas walked from city to city about 90 miles altogether and finally reached the capital city of Cyprus. How would you feel if you had walked that far? Wow, I would be so tired. It would, it would take them days to get to the, their destination. As they arrived, they met a name, man named Elymas. He was a false prophet, someone who wanted to turn people away from God. He used magic and witchcraft to try to get people to listen to him. God's word says witchcraft is evil. It's against God. One of the people who would listen to Elymas was the governor of the island, a very powerful man. The governor sent for Paul and Barnabas so he could hear what they were telling people about the word of God. He must have been curious. Elymas was strongly against the governor hearing about Jesus. He argued against Paul what Paul was saying. What if the governor believed on Jesus? Then Elymas would no longer, then the governor would no longer listen to Elymas. Elymas was determined to turn the governor against Jesus. He tried to make it hard for Paul and Barnabas to share the truth about Jesus with the governor. So as Elymas continued to argue against Paul and Barnabas and you know stop them from telling the truth about Jesus, Paul was asking God for boldness. God is greater than anyone or anything that opposes him. God is all powerful. So God did a miracle, something only God can do. Paul told Elymas that because he was arguing against God, God would make him blind for a short time. Immediately, Elymas could not see. God showed his power and stopped Elymas. 
God did a miracle to make sure his true word would be heard. Paul knew that God was helping him. Because it wasn't Paul who had the power to make Elemis blind, but it was God. And God used Paul in that moment just to kind of set, be the messenger. He often prayed for God to give him the words to say. Um, so, and so the Holy Spirit what helped Paul to be bold. So you also, when you are feeling scared or nervous about telling a stranger at the grocery store or telling a friend, um, even your best friend who may not know who Jesus is or is a believer of Christ, when you're scared in those moments, just simply say a quick prayer and ask God, God, please give me the boldness to speak the truth to them right now. And as you get older, you might feel you know, shy and timid and adults have a lot of trouble doing this too, Call it, you know, when we're eva evangelizing to others. But in those times, ask for boldness that you can speak freely and joyfully about Jesus. So um, just like how we can rely on God, Paul relied on the Holy Spirit to help him share the good news with the governor. And the governor was amazed when he heard Paul's preaching. He, um, he, he, and the governor ended up believing on Jesus. After their work in Cyprus was done, Paul and Barnabas had many more adventures as they traveled and preached for more than a year on their first missionary journey. In every place they visited, they were bold to tell others about Jesus. And like I said, you can be bold too. If you believed on Jesus, the Holy Spirit will give you boldness to tell others about Jesus. So for instance, go and tell someone to get on the Hope Church website and register, sign up for VBS. You can be bold and invite your friends to do VBS virtually with you this year. So I'm going to conclude today's message by um, encouraging you guys to be bold for God.